you're probably getting tired of hearing the same gray hair tips over and over again. Cut your hair short. Leave it long. Get it color blended. Just suck it up and grow it out. Use purple shampoo. Don't use purple shampoo. Hide the skunk stripe. Don't hide the skunk stripe. Just be patient. The truth is that there are some seriously effective ways to grow out your gray hair that I don't think get the attention that they deserve. So let's do this. Hi, I'm Lynn, and if you've been here before, then you know that I love inspiring women to go naturally silver. And if you're new here, welcome. I help women go silver as seamlessly as possible. Okay, so my first and probably most underrated tip for you is that you need to know that it's not always just as simple as just letting your hair grow out. I think that some women have this idea that they're not really experiencing the gray hair transformation unless they're suffering with two-toned hair for an extended period of time. It's as if the minute that they decided to go natural, they could do nothing to alter the process in any way. I mean, after all, if you've ditched the dye to be natural and free, then wouldn't it be a little bit hypocritical to try to help the process along? And the women who do it cold turkey, they're the ones that you see featured most often in magazines and articles because the contrast between the dyed hair and the gray hair is very, very striking. And doing it any other way might still be seen as giving in to societal pressures in some way. I feel like this might be a reason why a lot of women quit because they don't want to walk around looking like that. But to me, this is just too unnecessary and it's too stressful. It reminds me of the curly girl method for curly hair, which I might talk about another time, but it's a pretty strict method for embracing your natural curls. And for me, that didn't feel natural at all because there were just too many rules to follow. So all the time that you spend dwelling on and trying to muster up the strength to grow out your gray hair cold turkey could be better spent trying to find a method that actually works for you. Your reasons for going gray are as individual as the method by which you choose to go gray. When I ditched the dye, I unapologetically tried almost anything to conceal my grow out. I've used root touch-up sprays. I covered my hair with scarves and hats and headbands. I even attempted to fade the dyed ends of my hair with <laughs> Dawn dish soap. And then I dyed the ends of my hair hair back to the original color that I was dyeing my hair and I accentuated my demarcation line. That's right, I went back to Sally Beauty Supply. I bought the same hair color, the same developer that I used to use, the old color that I was dyeing my whole head. I just dyed the ends because I didn't like the brassiness and I created an even more drastic contrast between the gray hair and the color. I used blue shampoo, I used purple shampoo, I used color depositing conditioners. I had my hair professionally color blended, and then I continued to have to use color depositing conditioners after the toner faded. I also had to continue using blue and purple shampoo. So I feel like I did it all, most of it. So let's just back up a minute and talk a little bit about what I mean by cold turkey versus a concealment method for growing out your gray. I think the cold turkey method is the simplest, most organic way to go gray. You stop dyeing your hair and you let it grow. It's a long process, but it's it's not complicated at all. But in my opinion, this method can deter a lot of women from going gray in the first place. The process can literally take years. And while some women don't mind having two-toned hair and they actually embrace it, a lot of women don't want to endure this for that length of time, or not at all. On the other hand, there are methods that you can use to conceal your gray hair grow out. It's options. I like options. It's literally like knowing that this is not a black and white journey, but rather it is indeed gray. It's gray, literally. Really think about it as you have some level of control over the method that you use to go gray. I think that women who want to go gray and start their journeys truly want to see it to completion. They want to get to the finish line. And I mean, when you think about it, the goal for everyone is the same. It's to stop coloring your hair. It's to stop dumping toxic chemicals on your head. It's to have the freedom from the dye cycle. 
and running and hiding and covering those roots. It's to embrace your beautiful and unique silver hair pattern and to give a middle finger to archaic beauty standard. The next gray hair grow out method that is often underrated is actually a specific concealment method and this is called the dye strip technique. I have to admit that I really wish I knew about this technique when I started my silver hair journey because I would have been all in. I so would have done this. You take a section of your hair near the part and you dye it, parting your hair strategically while the rest of your hair is growing gray underneath and totally concealing the grow out. You continue to touch up the roots on the strip as you go. Then after a time, you simply flip your part over and you are silver and then let the dye strip grow out. Genius. I mean, how did I not even know about this? I thought I had researched everything there was about going gray before I actually went gray, but somehow this one got past my radar. I want to distinguish the dye strip technique specifically from other gray hair transition and concealment strategies. It's so effective because it is so seamless and so undetectable. You get the advantage of letting your natural gray hair come in without screaming to the world, I'm going gray, only to flip your hair one day and go, ha! And again, I haven't actually done the dye strip technique, but dare I say this might be one of the most effective ways to ensure a successful transition while concealing your grow up. So who is this approach suited for? I think it's for women who want to finish their gray hair journey without being all out there about it. Women who want to inconspicuously go gray in secret and not make their gray hair journey the center of their lives. Even though we are in an era now where more and more women are going gray and it's becoming more and more mainstream, I think there are still a lot of women who just don't want to put it out there. They don't want to flaunt it. Because at the end of the day, it really is nobody's business unless you want to make it their business. The dye strip technique is like this behind the scenes method of going gray. You can let your gray hair grow in under a strip of dye to conceal it. There really isn't much maintenance other than getting the dye strip roots touched up. And of course, the goal is to eventually grow out that dye strip and stop coloring your hair all together. I think it's a great method of getting you to the goal of being completely dye free. With any method that you use, it's essential that you take advantage of what's out there and decide what works for you. You can explore all the options that are out there and decide what fits with your personality how out there you want to be about it, or how hidden you want to be about it. And if your goal is to get to the finish line as soon as possible or enjoy the journey along the way. Now, I can already hear what you're thinking. You're thinking, Lynn, the whole reason that I wanna go gray is I don't wanna go to the salon and I don't wanna color my hair at all. I don't wanna deal with messy hair dye, even if it's just a strip. So why would I even want to commit to dyeing even this little strip of hair and still have to run for cover when the gray roots show on the strip? How is this going to help me? But remember, I'm not talking about you using this technique to keep you in an endless maintenance cycle. It's a means to keeping you on your journey keeping you from caving in and doing what makes you feel comfortable during this entire process. Because here's the thing that we can't overlook. While I can talk to you till I'm blue in the face about how awesome the journey is, you won't even understand that until you're on the journey. And until you stay on the journey long enough to really appreciate the depth of inner change that occurs on this transition. And I discuss this more in detail in this video. But until you can figure out how to get through the hard part, until you can figure out how to get past the awkward stage. You won't get to the real transformation, the life-changing part that has nothing to do with the color of your hair. The dye strip technique is just a technique to keep you on the journey long enough to experience this transformation. Okay, so let's talk about another underrated gray hair grow out concealment strategy. This is one that I used the entire time throughout my grow out. Let's get into a strategy that you can do at home that involves no hair dye. These are color depositing conditioners. You've probably seen color depositing conditioners before. The pinks, the purples, blues, greens, any color that you can imagine. These conditioners are meant to wash out after several shampoos. So there's no commitment. But there are actual silver hair color depositing conditioners that helped me with my grow out. You can use them to tone down the brassy ends of your dyed hair. This can help you blend those ends in without having to go to a salon. You can do it at home whenever 
really whenever you feel the need to. Now, I really have to hand it to Overtone because when I was growing out my gray hair, what bothered me more than anything, more than the gray roots coming in, was the brassy ends of my hair showing up and just looking this awful, awful color. When you stop dyeing your hair, the ends of your hair, the ends that you were dyeing your hair, whatever color you were dyeing them, whether it was black or dark brown or brown, maybe even blonde, those ends are going to start turning brassy. And the reason for that is that you're no longer depositing color on them. And so what you're seeing is the lifted hair with no color on it. So overtone is what saved me in the beginning and kept me going throughout my entire journey. And even though at one point in my journey, I did have my hair professionally color blended, I still used overtone because as I've mentioned in other videos, that toner that they use, if you go for a professional gray color blending, that toner is gonna fade out fast. So I still maintained it by using overtone when the toner faded out. Now, Overtone has three levels of silver from lightest to darkest. They have pastel silver, which I actually never used this during my gray hair grow out. I used the other two. I used the vibrant silver and the extreme silver because I have salt and pepper hair. I used the darker of the three. I only used Overtone on the dyed ends of my hair, as you can see in this video here, where I'm literally painting it onto the ends of my hair because I didn't know how it was gonna look on my silver. I, I was kind of afraid, you know, when you're growing out your gray hair, that silver is so precious to you and you don't wanna do anything to mess it up. So I was kind of afraid to put it on my silver back then. So I only used it on the ends of my hair. It toned that brassiness incredibly well and it lasted through several shampoos. It was also very conditioning. It smells amazing. And I do wanna mention here that this is not a sponsored post for Overtone. I just used Overtone, I credit Overtone with letting me keep my hair long throughout my silver hair journey. I think I would have quit a long time ago. Um, I may not have made it to the end if it wasn't for Overtone. So thanks Overtone. I've used Overtone in pink and in purple and both of those washed out of my hair. But I wanna make it clear that I know of two women, two silver haired women who used Overtone rose gold on their hair. It didn't wash out and they, it basically destroyed their grow out. They couldn't get it out of their hair. They ended up having to dye their hair again. So just keep that in mind. So always, always, always do a strand test. Do it on a silver part of your hair. I had to do a strand test just to make sure that it would actually wash out. I only used the overtone on the brassy ends of my hair, so that wasn't an issue for me but just do a strand test if you're gonna use it on your silver just to make sure that it washes out. If your ends of your hair are very orange, what I did experience with the extreme silver and with the vibrant silver is that the brassy ends of my hair actually took on a little bit of a green or a bluish tinge to them. It, it didn't bother me. I actually thought it looked kind of cool. I actually got compliments on it. People thought I did it intentionally. I have heard of other people saying that they've had the same experience. So just keep that in mind. Now it's been a long time since I used Overtone and I used the Overtone Pastel Silver for the first time on my entire head before making this video. I'm gonna cut away to the clips of how I used it and that's probably why, I don't know if you've noticed, but in this video, my hair looks quite dark because I believe it was from the overtone. It is very shiny and it does make the silver pop, maybe not in this lighting so much, but my hair definitely overall looks uh, quite a bit darker. So, and this was with the lightest overtone. So I can only imagine maybe what the vibrant silver or the extreme silver would do on my salt and pepper hair. It might make it look really dark. And I don't know that I wanna do that, but maybe for another video, I will do that. So anyway, this though, right now you're seeing the after before the before, um, but throughout this whole video, this was after I applied the overtone. So again, I'm using the pastel silver. The first thing that you're gonna notice is how amazing it smells. And look at the color of it pretty cool. I did not use the brush this time, but I do recommend that you wear gloves because it can stain your hands. So after I washed my hair, I just used it the same way that I would use any deep conditioner. 
So before I only used it on the brassy ends of my hair. This is the first time I'm actually using it on my silver. I'm using it on my entire head. And here you can see I am using quite a bit. I'm really just saturating my hair with it and I'm combing it through because I wanna get it all evenly distributed through my hair. Again, I have long hair, so I probably have to use a lot more than most people. I leave it on for about 30 minutes, so I just kind of put it up in a claw clip and just leave it for a little while and then just rinse it out. And so, like I said, this is the final result. Um, my silver in real life is popping. It's very bright. I don't know. Now, I, I do kind of want to try the vibrant or the extreme silver. We'll probably do a strand test just to make sure and to make sure that it washes out. So I hope that these underrated tips were helpful for you. Whether you go cold turkey or you use a concealment method like the dye strip technique or using color depositing conditioners, just remember that this is your journey and you have to do whatever it takes to keep you on your journey. This is just what I've been thinking about lately and I just wanted to let you know that you can do this gray hair thing your way and one day realizing that your silver hair was more than you could have ever imagined it would be. If you wanna learn more, just watch this video next to understand why this journey starts with hair and ends with this inner transformation transformation, this inner change that has nothing to do with your hair color. So make sure you check that video out and as usual, I'll see you in the next video.